Welcome to Halo Innovations. In this video, we're going to cover some of the setup tips after building your table, as well as some guidance to run test cuts to determine the best cut quality and arc voltage for your specific setup. First, we'll start off with wiring your plasma cutter to the CNC table. If you purchase the table with a plasma package, the supplied cable will come with the appropriate connection installed. If you purchased a table only, the cable will come supplied with label conductors and stake-on connections installed at the end of each wire. Now let's look at the arc height required for your torch. This height can vary between models and manufacturers of torches and consumables. In this video, we're going to use the supplied standoff and consumables with a pad of post-it notes to make our feeler gauge to measure the torch height. This height is being used as a starting point and will need to be adjusted through trial and error as you make changes to the setup, like cutting amperages, consumable sizes, and higher cut speeds. This will help you improve arc transfer, cut quality, kerf, and the bevel on your material. Next, we can mount the torch to the THC assembly. I'm going to mount this hand torch as low as I can in the clamp, and when tightening the screws, I want to be cautious not to over tighten the clamp to distort the plastic in the operation of the torch, but still firm enough to prevent movement. Please ensure that the nozzle of the plasma torch is squared up to the water table. You can loosen these two adjustment screws to square up each plane if necessary. After mounting the plasma torch, we'll need to confirm that the torch is mounted low enough to activate the Z-axis touch limit switch. We'll start by lowering the Z-axis until the travel stops. The tip of the torch will need to be at least a quarter inch below the cut plate, and I would recommend that it's no more than a half an inch below the bottom of a cut plate. To confirm that the touch limit switch can be activated on the thinnest material, I advise testing the limit switch on one of the water table slats. If the limit switch has activated correctly, you will have a small amount of travel if you lift up on the torch mount. A problem can be identified if there is no travel or if you hear a slight click of the limit switch when you lift the mount. Now the torch mounting is complete. The plasma torch cable will need to be dressed on the support arm. We'll do this by moving the torch to the farthest point of the table, then using the supplied Velcro ties and adding a couple zip ties of our own to dress the cable to my liking. Please be sure to add water or a mixture of a plasma table cutting fluid to the water bed before performing any test cutting. I recommend filling the table to a 50% level. For this next step, we are going to determine the IHS time that is required to provide us the torch height we want during a cut. This will help us to perform manual test cutting to determine the best cut speed and arc voltage before running a cut file. We are going to use numbers 4 and 5 to adjust the IHS time, then number 6 to run an initial arc height test after each adjustment over a scrap piece of metal. Using the feeler gauge that we made in a previous step, we'll continue to adjust the IHS time until we have reached our desired arc height. 
please record your IHS value on your blank halo cut chart sheet available for download off our website. Now we're going to prepare to run a manual test cut. We'll start by choosing some start point settings from the cut parameters chart, which can be accessed by pressing number nine on the keypad. You can scroll down to your material type and thickness. Press F1 to load those values onto your home screen. We can see that the program cut speed is now 3950 and the kerf has been adjusted to 1.2 millimeters. When performing a manual cut, we'll need to disable the THC by pressing number eight. Then adjust the manual traverse speed by pressing the button X and match the value to the program cut speed. Now we're going to activate the plasma cutter by pressing cut oxy and use the directional arrow to move the torch across the material. We are going to want to watch or record a short video of the actual arc voltage displayed on the machine. Then when you've reached the stopping point on your material, press cut oxy again to turn off the plasma arc. After the cut is complete, we can take time to evaluate the cut quality, the dross, the bevel, and the kerf width. You can make adjustments to the cut speed, machine amperages, tip sizes, air pressure, and arc height until the desired cut quality is achieved. I'm going to make an adjustment to the cut speed and perform another manual test cut. I like to adjust both program speed and manual traverse speeds at the same time. I'll use the F button to access the program cut speeds and the X button to access the manual traverse speeds. If you have lifted the Z axis between test cuts, be sure to press number six to run the IHS test to reset the arc height. After we have found our desired settings, we'll then prepare to test again using the torch height control. Enter in the arc voltage that was recorded while the machine was cutting using number one and number two. Adjust your pierce height by increasing the IHS time by 200%. Please don't forget to press number eight to re-enable the torch height control. I'm going to enter the shape library and select part number 11 for my test program. I'm going to pick some quick dimensions for the part and select OK. Now, because the shape is on a 45 degree angle, I'm going to select part options, then rotate and enter negative 45 degrees so that the part will travel across my x-axis. In this part options menu, we can also change the start point of the program by pressing F1. Once all your changes are complete, you can press the escape key to return to the home screen. To start the cut file, Press the green start button, followed by the enter key. Once the program has cut for a few inches, I'll press the red stop button while the torch is still above metal. Then use my feeler gauge 
to double check the arc height. If the arc height was not accurate, remember that increasing the voltage will increase the arc height. The lower the voltage, the lower the arc will be. If everything worked out, be sure to write down those parameters in your cut charts before moving on to your next cut file.